Hello again, this is David Coyle, and thank you for joining me again for Real Life Worth Living. As we again return to James chapter 3, and we pick up where we left off, we made it all the way through two verses in two sessions. And that's really pretty good, because there is an awful lot of meat in these verses, and uh, we really didn't uh, belabor anything, or get excessively technical over anything in these verses. There is more that we could say, but we're not going to. Uh, even though Martin Luther considered that the book of James was a gospel of straw, that it uh, didn't have enough substance in it to be of adequate and important reading for Christians, a position I am sure he has changed in the time since he has gone to heaven. He now knows that uh, what James wrote is every much the word of God as what Paul wrote, and that the two are not inconsistent. They are not incompatible, as he maintained. Now, with that said, I want us to turn over to 2 Timothy in chapter 4, because there are some verses here that I think uh, will also uh, uh, give us a little bit of insight into what James has already disclosed to us. Not everyone will teach for the proper reasons who teaches the Word of God. We've said that. Not everyone will teach for the proper impact, and that is for the impact on souls. My impact upon you, in my mind, is not seen in how well, how good of a front I put up for you to see, or how pretty of a face is in the center of the screen before you. I could get some argument there if I maintain that it was. From my standpoint, I am not out to uh, gain a big audience worldwide. I don't think I have any real um, problem with uh, causing that to happen. I am not out to gain disciples or sell books. I haven't written a single book. Even though uh, I could write books, and even though I have had uh, some people who tried to encourage me to write books, I haven't discovered anybody yet with a, uh, a real, uh, deep down, hungry desire to publish anything that I've written, so that's not my purpose. It isn't to sell a website. I don't have a website for sale. What I have on the internet is for free in order to bring people to know Christ. But there are not uh, always people who have uh, the greatest of intentions in, in uh, teaching the Word of God or preaching the Word of God. And Paul discusses these people when he addresses Timothy, a young preacher who became uh, elder at Ephesus. And he tells this young preacher in chapter 4, and I'm going to start with verse 1. I was going to start with verse 2, but I'm going to pick up with verse 1. I charge or counsel thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, that is the living, and the dead at his appearing and at his kingdom. Preach, that word there means to proclaim the word, be instant in season, out of season, that is when it's the uh, when it's the exact, right, perfect, comfortable 
acceptable time when people are willing to accept it and uh, also when they are not, when it's the propitious time and when it is not the propitious time to stand for the Word of God, you stand for the Word of God. And he says, Repu reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Doctrine means teaching. The teaching is to be from the Word of God. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They won't put up with it. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Verse 5. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. God's expectations of you have not changed. No matter what the world around you is willing to accept or not accept, you don't change your message. No matter how the world around you is willing to, uh, what trappings they are willing to receive, in order to enwrap your message to become more acceptable or palatable to them, you don't change your presentation. No matter what kind of music the world around is willing to accept, in order for you to be able to say, well, I'm reaching out in their language and in their music and in their terms, in order to get the concept of God across, that won't work. That never has worked. That never will work. You don't change your message. You don't change your method. You don't change one iota of the Word of God. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of your ministry. In other words, what you are to be doing is to faithfully give out the Word of God to anyone who will receive it. But suppose they won't receive it. I don't care how you dress it up. I don't care how you try to make it palatable. They still won't receive it. Or what they do receive is a watered-down version of the original and not the original. And that's dangerous. We don't play with the Word of God. We present it as God has given it, because then it is the Word of God. Our teaching is to instruct in the way of righteousness. Our teacher teaching is to correct error. Our teaching is to rebuke wrong. Our teaching is to strengthen faith. Our teaching is to win souls for Jesus Christ. To honor God and to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. As we have said, there are many self-appointed teachers who seek their own glory. The psalmist said of them, they speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. Like unto them are those who think they should control the God-called teacher. Don't endeavor in that activity if you haven't. Your job is to learn from the man of God, to learn from the Word of God, to become strengthened by the teaching of the man of God, and to put that into practice in your life to become a stronger, more devout, God-honoring, Christ-believing, Word-speaking, a true Christian before the Lord God. Uh, they may complain about you, that is, those who are, who hear you. Uh, 
uh, they may leave your church if you're a pastor. They may cause you to be thrown out of your position if you're a pastor. Their expectations of you are based upon another criteria other than the Word of God. Their own misled interpretations derive from their own lusts. Don't let them do that. You can't stand as a man or a woman of God if you're going to allow uh, people with... Uh, their own, con who have arrived at their own conclusions to dominate and control your message. <laughs>